Um, so I'm Dee Davison. I am a uh, professional in the film, TV and media space. Um, I've worked in that industry for about 20 years um, in various sort of uh, various different sort of sectors, both commercial, nonprofit um, and government. And I am in the world of sustainability, which I absolutely love. So um, I work in corporate sustainability. Um, I recently was working as a director of global sustainability for a big multinational media company. Um, and I left there last year and now I'm start going out on my own for the first time in my life, being a consultant and advisor to lots of different companies um, on the same topic. It's a pleasure having you here. And I'm really curious to hear your thoughts and insights on these questions. So the first one is, what does being strong mean to you? So I thought about this question and the first word that came into my mind was resilience. But actually, I think so. I think resilience is really is an important part of being strong to be resilient at all that the world throws at you at any given time. But I think the most important thing is to balance resilience with a sort of emotional awareness of um, being able to know when you know you can't do something or having a sense of vulnerability vulnerability around being okay with not being able to do it all so i think that's a really important part of being strong is to be able to say when you can't do something because i think we all kind of think we've got to keep going and keep delivering and and actually it's just as important to be able to hold your hand up and say no more i need a break <laughs> yeah thanks for that and um out of your own personal experience can you share when you had to be strong and how did you handle it um, yeah, I mean, it, this, I think, is something that I deal with on a regular basis in our in our world, in uh, film and TV and media. It's um, particularly in the in the part of the value chain that I've been mostly working in, which is quite technology heavy. Um, it's not very balanced in terms of gender, gender uh, diversity in the workforce. So um, the more senior I've become in, in my career, the more I've dealt with some difficult issues around sort of you know male dominated environments so um and I think when I was younger in my 20s it bothered me more um so you know being a woman in a workplace with lots of older men was quite daunting to me and I experienced some pretty unacceptable behavior that I wouldn't stand for now um but you know at that time I think that was probably the most challenging time being because you're just trying to do everything right and if something one thing goes wrong then you kind of blame yourself whereas now you know I've learned to just sort of you know roll with the punches a bit more and if things don't go right that's okay and you know more confident in, my, in myself so so yeah I think probably when I was younger in the workplace that was that was probably the hardest time when you're less confident and less able and you know you're not you're not putting your hand up when you don't know something you know and I do know that you're also a mentor as well in in this sector yeah. And I'm guessing that you're able to hold the space for other women in this area to to better understand and equip themselves with the skills to make sure that what happened to you won't happen to others. Would that be a right? Yeah, decision? yeah, yeah, absolutely. The mentoring scheme that I've been part of is called Rise. It's for women in broadcast um, scheme. It's exactly to try and tackle the gender diversity or lack of in our industry. Um, I've been a mentor on that program a number of times, and I've been a mentee. Um, and yeah, they they really uh, it's a really important network for for people to be able to see, you know, other women and, and understand what other people do and how they cope with situations. Don't get me wrong. The vast majority of my career has been great and I've had experience no problems at all. I think sometimes you just hit individuals that are more challenging. Um, and so, you know, and those are the times where you need your network and you need your support group to kind of help you through. Very true. And how do you think societal expectations about women and the concept of strength? I, since becoming a mother, I think that I've seen how societal expectations have impacted, you know, in, in all sorts of ways, some really minor. So I was chatting to a colleague and who's also a mum not so long ago who was getting frustrated by the fact that their school was giving them, um, <clears throat> giving them instructions for some homework or something and said, and, and the words were something like go to mummy's kitchen or find mummy's something or other, you know, assuming that the kitchen is mummy's area. And, you know, like mummy will know where things are in the house because mummy's probably more, more there than daddy is. And even the fact that you've got a mummy and a daddy and not two daddies or two mums, you know. So there are these I think when you have children, because the vast majority of people do come from, you know, two parent family and a mummy and a daddy and a 
yeah there's and and more often than not probably the men are still the ones that are working and you see more women at the school gates dropping off their kids but it's not always like that so you know i think those those societal expectations around things like when you're off on maternity leave when you come back flexible working needing time off when your kid's ill you know um that is puts on a whole lot of pressure around also trying to do everything else that everyone else is doing and you know i'm that person but my husband also takes time off if the kids are ill so it's just sort of yeah um there are expectations out there that sometimes are helpful but more often than not probably aren't that that kind of based on reality yeah it's it's still curious how it's still present today and i don't have children so this is an angle of life that i i don't i'm not privy to and then what are some common misconceptions that you've come around about strength that you might have encountered um i think the resilience one i think a lot of people think that you know you've got to be strong you've got to keep powering through you know you've just got to get through the work and in a workplace environment um you've got to be resilient and actually being strong as i said before i think it's really important to be able to show vulnerability to be strong so be able to say yeah when um when you can't do something or when something's not working uh, a situation happened to me recently where you know it's a great opportunity and actually I stepped away from it because I could just see it wasn't going to be right for me um and that was me basically saying I'm not the person for this job because I know where I'm good at I know I know where I play well and where I know where I don't play so well and um yeah so I think being and that made me feel very empowered to be able to do that to say you know I'd been invited to be part of this project and actually my own judgment was that it might not have been right for me and for the client so yeah I think um it's a misconception that you have to be able to do everything and know everything and you know if there's a gap in your knowledge or a gap in your experience that's a bad thing and you need to then like improve on that and fill it and know more and and of course we're all on this like learning journey and I absolutely love learning um so there are areas that I know that I want to kind of you know work on but the fact that you're not you're you're not no one's the completed article today so and that's okay um and so I think that is probably a misconception that we ought to some people like we need to reframe a bit yeah I think that's really important and uh, again that network you were talking about earlier is about supporting ourselves through that as well uh and helping reframe it along the way yeah I'm very curious about the flow into how your understanding of strength may or may not have influenced your approach to goal setting and success. I think it has. I think there was a period of time where, um, and I'm still working on this, being able to say no and and being able to prioritise self-care, um, you know, and, and sometimes put yourself first. And I think I have, yeah and I'm still working on that and I think over a number of years I've felt that you know I'm, I am naturally quite good at multitasking and and you know taking a, a fairly heavy load um and at work you know quite I can I'm able to be quite productive and work quite quickly when I need to and and and, and get a lot done but that's not to say that's necessarily the best way of working so I think you know what I've learned over the years in terms of developing my own ability to be strong is you know one you need to be able to say no two if something doesn't work out you learn from it and you see the positives in it and you move forward and you don't dwell on it um three self-care is really important and being able to take time out for yourself um and acknowledging when you need to do that and yeah and not being afraid to kind of prioritize like particularly as a mum you know I've got work and then I've got family life and there's not much space in between for me. Um, and to give you an example, I finished one contract um, that I've been working on at the end of just at the end of last month. And then um, the next one came in and wanted me to start straight away. And, and I pushed that back for a month because I really wanted to do a bit of self-care, a bit of family time, most importantly, a bit of learning of, on a course that I've been wanting to do for ages. So I forced that in between contracts and I've just taken a bit of a breather and that makes me stronger for the next thing that comes. But if I hadn't had that, I'd have been running empty basically at the start of a new contract. So I think, yeah, that's what I've learned and nurtured over the over the years. And I and I'm not fully there yet, but I'm, you know, I'm trying to kind of be more proactive about 
yeah taking time out for me that's really interesting because I actually don't do that and I'm very guilty <laughs> I'm very guilty of just running the next project into the last yeah into the last bit and yeah I think I think I'm going to actually build that into what you just said in 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 building in like that month of self-care where I just can breathe process reflect journal yeah. whatever I need or even educate in a level yeah so, thank you um well that might actually be the answer to the, this question which is you know do you, from your own experience do you have a tip or technique for developing and nurturing strength um I mean I I look a lot at what other people are doing as well and I love hearing about you know the stories and how other people are coping and I surround myself with network like this rise network and I'm on this c-suite group which is part of rise as well and you know we we meet monthly on a zoom call and we get together socially and you know I'm pretty I got a very good network in the industry a support network and socially with friendship groups as well and I get a lot of energy and support from that and I hope I can you know I think I give that back as well so um so yeah that's I mean having a good network of people who you go to at different times as well you know some people you can't go to when you need a hug and you just need some love some people you go to when you've got an amazing idea and you want to kind of you know blue sky it and think about how that could become a real thing so I've got um yeah amongst you having your personal boardroom is a concept I've used a lot so who's on your personal in your personal boardroom and what are those people all bringing to the table for you and then hopefully you're on a personal boardroom of some of those people as well um but I do think the tip that I've learned learned over the years, and I is more so than anything else, is just to try and um, embrace what you're good at. Obviously, have your development goals in terms of areas where you want to develop, but just not try and do it all. No one's good at everything, so bring in other people where you need it, and take that support where you need it, and learn from that, and just not trying to juggle it all. I mean, you know, I try and juggle being a good wife, being a good friend, being a good mother, being a good career person, you know, professional in my career, that's enough. <laughs> you know, I don't want to try and be a career, per, you know, um, a career expert in sustainability and media and other things and other things and other things. It's like just that's enough for now. You know, knowing when that's enough for now, I think is important. One of the other strong, 40, uh, 45 strong, she talked about that, know your strengths and strengthen them. And find yeah. friends where they have different strengths because you you are right we can't do everything to a high level nor should we so yeah, yeah there are similar patterns now emerging out of these really? talks which okay. I'm, I'm loving to see oh, yeah great good <laughs> and um to ask the far last question which is actually the first again what does being strong mean to you um so being strong uh I think honestly, I'd say slightly differently to when I started, which is being strong is is being self aware, um, and yeah, being self aware. There is an amount of resilience in there as well that you build up, I suppose, um, and being strong to know what's right for you, whatever scenario that is what's good for you what's good for your family and what your priorities are and you know keeping kind of a focus on that so I suppose being strong is to me is probably having the right perspective on life for you at any given time Beautiful. for what you need what you need at that time in life whether that's kind of like a work or a family priority or a personal priority or whatever but making those right decisions that's I think is what's strong but don't get me wrong, I could go to the gym more as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you, Dee. It's really insightful. Uh, and thank you so much for your time and your words of wisdom as well around this topic of strength for me. Oh, thanks so much for inviting me, Kate. I can't wait to listen to the rest as well. <laughs> <laughs>